My life, like many of yours, is filled with lots of wonderful things to include working, writing, creating, gardening, exercising, and cooking. Yes, cooking. I'm on a mission to change the way we see, experience, and relate to food. The concept of Sankofa reminds us to go back and fetch what was essential for maintaining a quality and wholesome lifestyle and apply it to modern day practices. So, would you like to join me at the table? Welcome back to my Sankofa table. I am your host Tia Capers and on this program we focus all things health and wellness. Now today we're going to be talking about breaking fast or shall I say breakfast is what most people refer to it by. Um, for me uh, I typically eat around noon every day. I do what some people call intermittent fasting so some people start their day off with a hearty breakfast some people have it light some people skip it all together but for me I eat around noon uh, breakfast time so today I'm gonna share some of the recipes or some of the breakfast items that I typically eat from day to day so if that's something that you're interested in then stick around stay tuned and when we come back in the studio I'll be cooking up and sharing some of the breakfast items that I typically eat. Thanks. Hey, this is Chocolate Drop with The Chocolate Box Presents and Tia Capers of My Sankofa Table. And we want to encourage you to tune into both our programs. The Chocolate Box comes on every Tuesday at 12 noon and then again at 9 p.m. And what about My Sankofa Table? My Sankofa Table airs every second and fourth Saturday of the month, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Spectrum Cable Channel 21 and AT&T U-verse Channel 99. So you never know what you're gonna get. Nope. You can watch The Chocolate Box Presents or My Sankofa Table. What else? And everyone is welcome at the table. <laughs> Absolutely. Hope to see you there. See you there. Bye. Welcome back to my Sankofa table. Again, I am Tia Capers, the host and producer of this program. And today we're going to be breaking fast. So I'm gonna share some of the items that I typically eat for breakfast, share them with all of you, uh, starting with cereal. Now, most mornings I do eat spelt flakes. Um, for you at home, you can eat whatever type of cereal or anything you like, but I like to call it loaded cereal. So what I mean by loaded is I like to get in a lot of fruits and, and things in the cereal so it can be a little bit more hearty. And so there, it's a way to, for me to incorporate different fruit, fruits, nuts, coconut, and anything else that I like. So I have here today, already fixed up, a bowl of spelt flakes and all, only thing I'm gonna do is just add condiments to it. I'm gonna add blueberries, okay? And I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut and walnuts. Typically I add a banana. So I don't have a banana with me here today, but another thing I like to add, a little bit of agave. And so, again, you can use any type of sweetener that you like. And I like to go in with a little bit of cinnamon, sometimes ginger. Okay, so that completes it. Now, most days I, uh, if I'm leaving, if I'm not at home, again, I eat around noon, I typically will travel with this cereal. And so I'll put the cereal in a container with a lid and I'll travel with it with like a container of milk in a can, a stainless can that'll keep the milk kind of cold for a, an extended period of time. Okay, and so another good for on the go is overnight oats. So I have here some rye oats. You can use any type of oats that you typically use. For me, I eat a lot of ancient grains, so I choose rye oats and it is an ancient grain and for the rye oats you can add coconut milk to them get the other coconut milk so you can add coconut milk to this you can add chia seeds to this so this is about a half a cup of the rye oats add your milk to it add your sweetener to it which again will be agave for me you can do maple syrup you can do whatever sweetener, honey, whatever sweetener you like. And 
Let me get a spoon here. You can give that a little bit of a stir. And then you will basically add in any type of fruit that you like to it. So once this sets, I'll go ahead and add the rest of those blueberries. And you can add cinnamon to this as well, or ginger, or any other spice, allspice or anything that you like. It's a lot of different options out there. Okay, you can add vanilla flavor to it if you'd like. So this is gonna swell overnight. So it looks like it's not quite full, but if you let this sit overnight, it'll start to swell. All right, and then it'll be a little bit more plentiful. Okay, so put the lid on. You can pop this in the refrigerator. This is good for kids. This is good for on the go. Um, it's good for pretty much anybody. And it, you can keep this in here for a few days. So tomorrow it'll be nice and thick. You can eat it just like that. And this is like for some people who's into eating raw, this is another raw option. So it's nothing really cooked in here. All right, and then so moving on, um, another thing I like to eat are grits, or what I call loaded grits. Um, I was speaking to one of my aunts who's now passed along um, one day, and she said, what are you having for breakfast? And I say grits. I'm gonna add all these vegetables and things in there. So um, while I'm talking, let me go ahead and add the grits in there, or let me salt the water. So for today, I'll get back to the story, but for today, put a little bit of sea salt in there. Um, since the water's boiling, I'm gonna pour some of this water in here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the, so they can be cooking while I'm talking. All right, so this is about a cup of the grits, and these are kamut, and this is another ancient grain. These come like a uh, wheat berry, and I put them in the coffee grinder to grind them up. Some up, sometimes you can find them already ground up, but it's hard for me to find that nowadays. So uh, there was a health food store that's no longer open um, that I used to buy them from. So, all right, so back to the story. So I was telling her I'm gonna put all this good stuff in my grits. I'm gonna put the onions and peppers, which I already have cut up. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some onions and peppers in the grits. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, it tastes good. Um, and then she said, you ever had red grits? And I said, red grits? No, what is that? So she said, just basically add tomato paste or tomatoes to your grits, turn it red. I said, oh, another layer of flavor. So today I have tomato paste that I'm also gonna stir in. And now with these loaded grits, I like to season them. So I like to add different flavors to, to, the, to the grits. Okay, so I was so glad to get that little tip from my aunt, so it turned the grits red. I think I served this, I have quarterly dinners, or I used to have quarterly dinners before COVID <laughs> in my house, and I think I served these the first dinner I had, and they were pretty much a hit. All right, so we already have the sea salt in there, and for today, I'm just gonna add some of my already blended up spices to this. So in here, I think I have a little cumin, I uh, might have some onion powder, and uh, some herbs. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that in there, okay? And for the last thing to add in there will be kale. Um, you can also add a little bit of turmeric, so here's an opportunity to add turmeric for those that are trying to eat a little bit more healthier, adding turmeric and stuff to your diet, you can add that. So I add a little bit of turmeric to our grits. And I'm going to add a little bit of coconut milk. This will make them a little creamy. Okay. And so I did bring some fresh parsley from my garden and I don't know what I did with it. I think I left it somewhere, uh, but that's okay. So for you at home, you can add parsley, you can add any types of herbs and spices to your pot. This is just an example of something that I typically eat. So the grits are thickening up. So while the grits are thickening up, I'm going to um, start working on some sauce because, or some syrup, because I'm going to make a waffle. So 
I'm gonna go ahead, I have maybe, not even a quarter, maybe a quarter of a cup of water boiling. And I have some blueberries, so I'm gonna make a blueberry sauce. And so I'm gonna add some blueberries in here to start boiling and, and softening up. So to that, I'm gonna add just a little bit of cinnamon. Okay, maybe about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Um, and I'm also gonna squeeze just a tad bit of lime juice in there. Okay, move that out the way. Cut this lime and just squeeze just a tad bit in there. Okay, and I'm also going to add some agave to this. Maybe a tablespoon or two. Let me get another spoon here. All right, so I'm gonna bring this back up to a boil, hopefully. And while that's going, I'm gonna start mixing up the ingredients for the uh, waffle. All right, so the grits are really thickening up. So let me turn them down a little bit. They popping all over the place. Watch your heat at home, y'all. Watch your heat and stay safe. And I don't think I brought a lid for this pot today. See, this is what happens when you have to make a makeshift kitchen in a studio. But that's okay. We're gonna just turn down the heat a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and add some kale. So we're gonna add kale to the, to the pot. All right, you can add spinach. So sometimes when I don't have any kale, I typically add spinach. All right, you know, if you want, you can add mushrooms to this. You know, you can fry some mushrooms and lay them on top if you'd like, okay. All right, and so they're getting really, really thick. And this is what we want. So they'll be done in a matter of minutes. And even if you don't use this type of grit, the Kamut, K-A-M-U-T grit at home, you can use your white corn grits or whatever grits that you use. It works the same. I have another aunt um, who does not have Kamut grits and shout out to her because she still made this dish with her um, regular grits that she used. Okay, so. The grits are pretty much done. And I wish I had brought that lid. Um, I have a different lid. I'll just, for safety purposes, I'll just makeshift and cover that with that because we don't want anything to pop out. So already the blueberries are starting to boil. The blueberries, the water, and the agave is already boiling. And we had a little bit of cinnamon in there and a little squirt of lime juice. So this is starting to boil. And once the blueberries um, are done, I'm gonna mash them up a little bit with the potato masher. I'm gonna mash them up a little bit. And when you let this sit, it'll thicken, okay? So depending on how much water you put in there, how little or how much you put in there, it'll thicken. Cause sometimes I take this same uh, syrup, I use it for syrup, you know, for pancakes or waffles, and then I'll turn around and let it thicken up, put it in the refrigerator and use it for jam because I don't buy the regular jellies, too many ingredients, too much cane sugar, too sweet. So this way I stay in control of how much sugar I wanna add to my dish and what type of sugar. So, and it's just a few ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing up the waffle mix, all right? So for the waffle mix, I have a cup of spelt flour. You can use any type of flour you'd like. Um, you can use waffle mix over the counter. I just always encourage people read the ingredients because there may be some things on the back that you may not want to incorporate into your diet no more. That's what happened to me. So a lot of things I have to make from scratch, but I stay in control of what I put in my body. So. So this is a cup of spelt flour, but I'm only gonna use a half a cup since I'm only gonna make one waffle today. All right, so I have the flour in the bowl, okay? I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut sugar. This is optional. You don't necessarily have to, but I like a sweet waffle. So this way I get to add in uh, maybe three teaspoons of coconut sugar. 
I'm going to add just a pinch of sea salt. Okay. And I'm going to add some cinnamon. All right. And then here is where you get creative. You can add chopped nuts if you would like. You can add uh, fruit if you'd like. It's up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and heat up the waffle iron and get the spray ready. Today I have a little bit of grapeseed oil spray. Okay, there we go. That's working. You can use olive oil spray. You can use whatever spray you have at home, or you can just pour some oil in there and brush it, you know, to oil it up. But today I have an, uh, a grapeseed oil spray. While that's heating up, I'm gonna continue to stir my blueberry syrup. And it's just about ready. I can, I can, uh, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more agave in here just to thicken it up a tad bit more. Again, you can use maple syrup or any type of sweetener. So I want it to be thick and I want it to be thick quick. So I'll add that in there. Um, the waffle iron's heating up and here's our dry mix. So we have our spelt flour, we have the coconut sugar, a pinch of sea salt. Now I'm gonna use, um, I think I'm gonna just add some blueberries. Since we're having blueberry uh, syrup, I'll just add some blueberries in here. All right, and then for the wet ingredients. So, because I don't eat baking soda anymore, um, I typically, if I need something to have a, a lift or a rise, I'll use a sparkling spring water. So today, for my mixture, I'm gonna add a little bit of sparkling spring water. Now this you may have to eyeball and get it to the right consistency. So I'll start off with about maybe a half a cup or so. And just give it a little stir and it's gonna fizz up and that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to fizz up because we no longer use <laughs> uh, the things that typically make it fizz up and rise. So we get the right consistency on this. And I got it right the first time. All right, so it's almost to the right thickness. And from here, if you want it more, more sweet, you can add, you know, whatever sweetener you like. You, I added the coconut sugar. Okay. All right, so I think our pan is heating up. I'm going to take a look at what we have going on with the, the blueberries here. And they're thickening up. I'm gonna give them a mash. I'm gonna give these a little mash, help them out a little bit, okay? And the longer it sits, it's going to thicken up even more. All right? So, you can also add cherry tomatoes. You can add cherry tomatoes to the grits. I'm gonna go back and give them a stir. I'll just slice a few of these cherry tomatoes here. We already added the tomato paste, but you can have tomatoes in there as well. Now, I, I typically grow a garden, and I love growing those yellow tomatoes, and I usually put those in there, and they look so pretty in there, because again, you know, I eat with my eyes, so I'm always finding ways to incorporate something colorful. All right, and so, believe it or not, our grits are done. And I'm gonna try to hold them up so we can see them here. I may have to add just a little bit more liquid. Liquid to the pot. Okay, move this out of the way. I'll just sit it here for now. This is what happens when you have limited space and you got so much going on. So I'll add a little bit more water, or at this point you can add a little bit more milk if you like. If you want them a little bit more creamier, right now I'm just trying to thin them out. So I'm gonna turn them off because they're done. And voila, look at there. Wow, what a meal, right? So it's not your plain old grits. Thanks to my Aunt Teen, uh, may she rest in paradise, uh, hooking me up with the idea to add the tomatoes to it because that really does add another layer of flavor. And this is what we're always trying to go for. We want something that tastes good, looks good, smells good, feels good and nourishes our body, right? And fills us up too. All right, so I'm gonna turn off the syrup, turn off 
the grits and um, and start with the waffle. So we have our mix already mixed up. I'm gonna move my tea. By the way, I'm drinking a roasted dandelion tea. Uh, it smells phenomenal. For those who like that early morning coffee smell, this is a great alternative. No, it doesn't have caffeine, but it tastes really, really well. So I uh, have roasted dandelion tea, has a lot of great benefits. I tr tr typically start off my morning with that. All right, so. Got the waffle iron, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the waffle in there. And I think I've measured that just right. I don't always get it right, y'all, but got this one right. So I added a half a cup of the spelt flour and it seemed to have worked out very well, nicely. We got our waffle iron covered here. Go ahead and put that down and give it a flip. And now that's going um, while we're cooking the waffle. I'm gonna mix up a favorite type of juice that I like. I don't drink juice every day, but this one is pretty tasty. So it's just some over-the-counter store-bought. Um, I usually use a pomegranate plum, but today I'm gonna use a black cherry plum. So it's just a juice mixture. All right, so I'm gonna pour some of that in there. Okay. And this is really good, y'all. All right, so it's gonna be mostly the juice and that's all natural juice. And then I'm gonna add orange juice to that. So I have some orange juice. Okay. So we got orange juice, the plum juice, and now just a little bit of lime. Squeeze a little bit of lime juice in there. Okay. And believe it or not, that little bit of lime really does the trick. Okay. So we have the lime juice in there and we'll just give it a little stir and it's all set. And this is a really tasty juice. Usually I have it around breakfast time. So we'll pour up a little juice here. And for this, as usual, you can use whatever concoction suits you. Okay, so the waffle's cooking. The syrup has thickened some more. And it's just the right consistency. There. Okay, grits are done. And let me see if I can go ahead and start plating up something here. So we have the cold cereal there. So just to give you an idea of what this looks like. All right. You can see what it looks like out of the pot. All right, so. Here's what we have out of the pot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold that up in just a second, but I want it to put just a little garnishment on there. You know, we want stuff to look good and taste good and everything. So I put some cherry tomatoes on top and we have a nice bowl of loaded red grits. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it smells phenomenal. Trust you me. All right, so we have our grits ready. And all right, let me check on the waffle because we are running out of time. Oh, we're getting there. Just maybe one more minute on that. So let me get the plate ready for the waffle. Okay, we got the plate ready for the waffle. And I'm just gonna sit this on the table over here because this is ready to be eaten, okay? So we got the grits there. We got our juice here. Okay, so we're ready to enjoy it. We got the tea right here. Okay, and for whoever wants, we got some overnight oats. 
We got some loaded cereal here. And if you want, you can add blackberries. You can add strawberries to this. You can add bananas to this, is what I typically do. So I'm just gonna cut up strawberries really quick. See? All right, you can add walnuts to that. So we have our loaded cereal there. Okay, and I think the waffle is calling our name. I think it's ready. The green light's on, it says it's ready. So let's see what we have. Oh my goodness, it is ready. So let me find something to take this out. So you wanna practice safety first, people. So set the plate there. Get the waffle out of here. And it's nice and fluffy, so don't worry about baking soda. We got options. Look at there. We got options. We got a nice blueberry waffle. Didn't have to use no baking soda. We're all set. We just used some sparkling spring water. That's it. To make it nice and fluffy. We didn't need eggs for this. No, we didn't need that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of the um, syrup on there. Wait for it. So we got the syrup. So at this point, you don't necessarily have to uh, use pancake syrup or anything. We got berries here. Let me put some more, um, put a strawberry on the top. Okay, so we got a big, beautiful waffle here. So this has been today's program. Thank you guys for tuning in. Now we have all these breakfast options. So, hey, go for it. Waffle. Uh, we have grits, we have cereal, we have overnight oats, we have options, we have healthier options. So thanks for tuning in, stick around, uh, we'll come back with more healthy recipes and remember we air every second and fourth Saturday of the month at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and we will see you at the table. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.